And welcome back to Gordo's Games. It's Gordo here with some more Digimon TCG content. So today, deck profile. End of the year is coming around. We're at the, in the, the end of set 1.5. Obviously, it's not going anywhere. But, you know, we're getting more spice, more cards. Guaranteed everybody's decks changed around. They want to try something new. Um, we've got that in about a week. So, be good to see how that all plays out and what comes of it. Um, let me just start sorting out my lighting here. But in the meantime, we're going through an old deck that we played before. Red Ragnar. It's a very solid, very reliable deck. Um, this is kind of my memory stamp. Me, that's what the most majority of these decks are. They're kind of to remind me what I played and how I feel I got the build to its, its best point before the end of the set. So let's get into it. Let's stop talking. But first things, if you do like the content, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And then hit that bell for notifications so you know when my content goes live for you. Alrighty. Let's go. Let's go, go, go. And here we are. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm knocking lights and all sorts. I'm having a right mare of a day. Right mare of a day. So, Red Ragnar. We'll keep it simple to start with. We run five Digi Eggs. Uh, four Gigimon. Gigimon inherently is one of the best Red Eggs going. It's live before the Coromon. Gives a thousand buff if your opponent has five in trash. Great stuff. Especially against purple. Because it's live stupidly quick. And then a one of Coromon. Coromon is good if you do go tall, which you generally are going to go in this deck, it gives you the thousand buff. It's just a little bit specific on how, obviously, when you do get that buff. So, level six or seven only. So, that's the Digi Eggs. We're going to fire it off. Uh, now, moving on to the rookies. I believe we played 14, but I'm going, to, I'm going to tell you now. Surprise, surprise. It's what we start with. Four Agamon. It's a ridiculously good card. Generate buff, 1000 DP, no criteria except for it's your turn. You can't go wrong with that. Moving on to the next one, we've got four Zubamon. Red Ragnar, uh, it, the reason why I think this deck is tr severely strong is its level of consistency with things like the Searcher here. And if you really want to, you could add it in the, the Ludamon as well from the black side of it just to give you the added thing. But I don't like stacking a, an odd colour in there just to get extra searches. If need be, I'll just drop this or I'll just digivolve up. Um, and you end up bottom decking too many things if you're just constantly recycling through it. So, 4 of Ludamon puts in a good amount of work. It's 3 cost, so it can be good if you're on 2 just a memory choke as well. Put them in 1, you know, bit of back and forth. Uh, following that, we're going to Vanillas. We've got 3 Mono. Mono, two costs, three K body, vanilla, it's good, we love it. Who doesn't like vanillas? Yeah, that's where we're at. Following vanillas, three Beomon. Exact same principle as mono, the memory choke. Being able to just play this on board if it's let's say you've got the memory tamer down, you put the labels on board and you still have enough memory to then memory choke them by but going onto a blocker on top of this. Um so yeah, really good uh the memory choke really does come in handy sometimes, especially the fact you take your time to build up in raising quite a lot of this deck because you really want to build the dream stack as well as trying to push or just hold them off a bit. So that was 14, I believe. I didn't count, but you know, that's why I record these things. <laughs> Alrighty. Next in line, we have four Dark Tyrannomon. It's a vanilla, one cost to evolve, it's sixth cost to play, it's got a 6k body, it's je just generally good. Being able to let you cycle up that little bit quicker, even in this deck as well. Obviously, I know your aim is to get the most ideal stack, but sometimes you just want to get that Ragnar out. If you can get up to the Ragnar, if you have your ties established, you get additional security checks anyway. So, the vanillas come in handy. Now, we run a 2 of Zuba, Eagle On your turn, while this is one is level 7, it gains security attack plus 1. So the reason I want two of this and not just four of the grey one uh, is because it adds a level of consistency with the Zubra. There's more targets for me to hit, uh, there's less likely chances I'm going to win. And if I'm missing a level four, it does mean there's a chance I can fight, I could see a level four just to help filter my hand. Following that, we've got two of the grey one. A generic security attack plus one, so it doesn't matter what level you are, you could be five, six, it doesn't matter, it's not specific to seven. So it's good for that early aggression because tw um, Durandamon, Bright, they are 12k bodies, so they can swing pretty safely most of the time. The fact is, Red has a lot of buffs. So, yes, yeah, having two in there, I found was a good number. And then I run a three of Cordramon. I only run the three because this deck does have other blockers, and they're very beefy blockers. Ragnar himself, being a 14k blocker, you know, don't get me wrong, 
they, they, you know, I do sometimes feel like I, I've missed one of these, but I don't think it's ever been my the point that makes me lose the game um, because we do have access to a blockers. So we run 11 uh, level fours there, slightly less than my normal routine, which is 12. But you know, you have to you, you make some uh, changes, some sacrifices here, there, and everywhere. Moving on to level fives, uh, we have two lava. Um, it's a vanilla, two cost to digivolve, and seven cost to drop, which is a bit pricey in the ground one, but it's got an 8k body. And sometimes being able to swing over your opponent's blockers just to push for that last damage, because how it tends to work with this one is you'll have the Ragnar built up, you'll swing for all their security, but you still need one more check because you can't swing for the last uh, last bit of damage off, off, the, off the additional security checks. So having something that can swing over a blocker just to force them to get rid of it, because if this was ground one and I'll swing it, um, do we sing a swix, uh, six swix? Six for six, blocker, ground one into the blocker, I'm going to crash. Realistically, I want to take their blocker out if they're going to have to block me. So Lava puts in some work. Speaking of ground, we do run three of it. If we don't see the pieces, um, like level three and fours, and we're in a bad spot, or we've been given a lot of memory, and we could potentially just turbo into Ragnar, hard drop the, uh, the ground one. It's worth doing. Ground them on straight into the uh, the Durandamon or Bry, and then you've got the Ragnar. If you've got the pieces, you get a free one. Um, obviously, the following turn, because obviously you generally want to get the free one when you're about to uh, attack. You don't ever want to leave just a Ragnar sitting there on the basis that they could have a Gaia Force or a Trump Sword or something like that. And then we run a four of Doramon. Doramon's a really good card. Same as Zuberigamon. If you're at level set, while well, this is one is, uh, is level seven, it gains security attack plus one. So as you know, this deck is formed around taking out your opponent's security in one fell swoop. It's made to destroy. It is the uh, caveman-esque of big swing, hit hard. So we run 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 level 5s there. Uh, level 6s. Now I'm, I'm skeptical around this because I, I've tried and tested it before and I found this ratio worked, but I do understand the logic of running more. I don't think it's a bad idea actually overall so after testing so much. So I run 3 Durand and I run 3 Bry. Uh, I don't see any harm in just running 4 and 4 because the fact is Zuba is live quicker and you're more likely to see it and um, obviously deck forms around it. So this could quite easily be changed out, but I always I always find having some of the tech pieces at the level six just kind of helps you uh, push the game a little bit sooner than just waiting for Ragnar. So you're not just a one trick pony. So on that basis, we run a one off volcanic to stop those rushes because we're looking to build up. We're not necessarily building the biggest board state. So if they go wide, we go volcanic. And then if you go volcanic, if you've got the Ragnar pieces in hand, you go the Ragnar on top of it. Happy days. It's just like playing a, a form of Mega Zoo there. And then we run a one of War Grey. For those moments when you're playing against um, 2cc, 3cc, anything, oh, or red itself, just something that's potentially going to cause you problems. Because we run the TIE Tamer, we're at a point where you, you are going to be on 3 most of the time, as long as it's down. So you could swing. This will have security attack plus 1, plus 2 because of the TIE, or multiple, don't know how many you've got down. And if it's got a grey one under it. And you could possibly do as just as much as what the Ragnar does. Obviously, yes, it's only 11k, whereas the Ragnar is a bigger body. But this shutting out the options really does uh, put in some work. So we just run eight level sixes there. Level sevens. Now, funny enough, you're not going to guess this, but we play four Ragnar. I ain't shock and awe. A Ragnar deck that plays Ragnar. Four is the magic number. I don't think you, you can go with any less. I mean, I know I've seen people try using like the Metal Greymon to recycle it back because they run less overall. I just find it's a very inconsistent. You need to see it. You want to see it. It's more targets for Zuba to add. And when you see a Ragnar, Ragnar is like, oh, out of the five the top five cards you reveal, it's like, I'm going to take two Ragnars just to be on the safe side. So yeah, Ragnar's all around a really good card. I mean, a card that has Reboot himself and Security Attack plus one. It's just, yeah, it's too good. Too good. And then last but certainly not least, we run two of the tie. Um, there for the memory set, but then also it's there for the additional security attack because it's relevant on the Ragnar Lord. Even if you've um, obviously 
because it's four dissolution sources and you stack extra dissolution sources underneath Ragnar, it's alive a lot more often than you'd think. Even if you went from I think five, six, six, seven. No, some some four. So even if you start from four, you could still trigger it as long as you uh, use the Ragnar's effect to stack some underneath it. So it's good. And then we run two Guy Force. Now, generally speaking, I don't like running such a low count of Guy Force, but then I don't like running such a high count of Guy Force because if I run any more, I see it in hand. If I run it less, well, if I run it now at the moment, I, I it's never really in security to actually save me. I think in one game the other day it did. It was a last last check which caused me to win the game, which is what Guy Force is there for. Um, but yeah, no, I, I hate seeing this in hand, but I can't ju I can't justify more of it just to try and see it in security. So run it as a two up. So that is Red Ragnar. As I said, the concept is very simplistic. You're there to swing big, hit hard, take everything out in near enough one go if you can. And generally, it's a proven fact it does work. It's, um, it's done well in tournaments before. It's generally a consistent deck because of the fact it has searches, which we'll see more in BT4 from things like um, oh, Flame Mon than that for Ancient Grey Mon and things, and things like that. So there are going to be a lot more things that play into the similar style of Red Ragnar. And I do think it will still have a place in BT4. I don't think I don't know if anything actually adds to it. Maybe that will be something I do on my next video. But generally, it's still a solid overall deck. So. That is Red Ragnar. If you like the content, as I said, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And obviously for myself here at Gordas Games, thank you for watching. Thanks for enjoying, obviously, the content. Thanks for stopping by.